I said that if they didn't want the cost of raising a kid, then they shouldn't have had one. A few weeks ago, though, my mother called me begging for money because their dinosaur of a window AC unit finally died. I told them I wasn't giving them anything. They were too cheap to replace the AC unit on their own, so I was not going to buy them a new one. My mother then complained about how I have two in my house, and the least I could do was give them one. I then said that maybe if she and my father weren't always pissing away their money on beer and marijuana all the time, then they'd have the money to buy another AC. Then I said that I wasn't giving them one of mine or any money. End of story. Only, it wasn't the end of the story. A few days later, I came home from work to find out that my house had been broken into. My front door locks were drilled out, and both of my window AC units were gone. Nothing else was stolen, but they went out of their way to make a huge mess for some stupid reason. Probably to make it look like a typical robbery or something. I knew that it had to have been my parents, and I called the cops. I went with the cops to my parents' house, and sure enough, they had both of my AC units going on in their windows. When confronted, my parents obviously denied the theft. They claimed they already owned the AC units, but statements from their neighbors said otherwise. I bought these AC units used online years ago, which means that I didn't have receipts. So I figured that my only option was to look for witnesses in my own neighborhood, and as luck would have it, a neighbor across the street has security cameras. And the edge of one of the cameras caught just enough to see my parents showing up in my father's truck. My father could be seen walking with a cordless power drill in hand. Then, a few minutes later, they came back to the truck with my AC units, then went back in to ransack the place, I'm guessing. With this evidence in hand, the cops had cause to arrest my parents. At first, both of them acted like they'd done nothing wrong, but I convinced the cops to let me do the talking. I said they could either return the AC units to my home and clean up the mess they made, or I'd let the cops arrest them both right there. They'd already stolen from me, lied to the cops, trespassed, vandalized my house, broke my front door locks, and there was video evidence of what they'd done. If I pressed charges, they were both going to jail, for sure. My parents looked deflated, then asked for a moment to talk with each other in their bedroom. I heard a lot of shouting from both of them, and I could hear my mother yelling that my father was an idiot. And in turn, I could hear my dad trying to blame me. After about five minutes, they came back out looking even more deflated and said they'd return the AC units and stop bothering me for money if I didn't press charges. I said they were going to clean up the mess in my house and buy new locks for my front door as well. And then I wanted written apologies from both of them on top of it. They begrudgingly agreed and I even got a police escort back to my house. My father was forced to put the AC units back in my windows, and then left my mother to clean up the huge mess they made while he went out to buy replacement locks for my front door. He was gone for about an hour, and came back with a new stainless steel lock set to replace the knob and deadbolts. Then, he had to help my mother finish cleaning. During this time, I let the two cops just sit and watch them while drinking soda. They said that it was very entertaining. After everything was cleaned up, I gave my parents each a piece of paper and pencil and told them to write out apologies to me for what they'd done. My father looked especially pissed and said that I was treating him like a child. I said that he was acting like a child and this was just me holding him accountable. And I could always send him to jail, but this felt like a better way to teach him a lesson. My mother wrote out a good apology, but my father's was pretty half-hearted and passive-aggressive, but I didn't care. It seemed to kill him a little inside to have to do that. And when he was done, he left without speaking to me. My mother said that she was sorry and she'd leave me alone and then followed after him. The two cops said they thought the whole thing was hilarious and then thanked me for giving them an excuse to take a break while on the job before leaving. Since then, I haven't heard a peep from my parents, but their next door neighbor told me they went and bought a new AC unit. So I guess they did have the money for a new AC unit after all. It makes me wonder how high they were when they thought that it was a good idea to steal from me. Maybe having lean pockets for a while will teach them. Then again, they are who they are after all. That was r slash Entitled Parents, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.
Welcome to r slash am I the butthole where OP gets pregnant during a threesome. Am I the butthole for not letting my baby daddy's fiance name our baby? I'm a 27 year old woman and I had a one night stand with my baby daddy, Jasper, who's 25. I'm currently 24 weeks pregnant. There was no cheating, but that's not important for the story. Jasper's fiance, Maddie, who's 23, lost their first child a year ago. I can't imagine going through child loss, and I've been trying to be accommodating to her, but I've set a few rules. 1. She can't treat me as a surrogate because I'm not. This is Jasper and I's kid. She'll be the stepmom, not the adoptive mom. 2. She cannot be in the delivery room. I'm only allowed to have two people there, and I chose to have Jasper and my mom. She argued and she really tried to push it because she wanted me to have her and Jasper, but I said no. Then she wanted me to have her and my mom, and I said no. I was clear that even if Jasper wasn't in the room, then she wouldn't be allowed either way because I'm not comfortable with that. 3. She can't make big decisions for our kid on her own. She can suggest and she can ask, but she can't take them unless it's an emergency. Aside from that, we're all aware that this situation isn't common and we'll have to learn along the way. A few days ago, the three of us went to dinner and Jasper asked if I'd given any thought to our kid's name. I said yes and gave him a list. I told them they can add some names to it and then the three of us could discuss them and choose one. Maddie told me that she wanted to give the kid her dad's name as a middle name since it's very special to her. I'll be honest, I do not like that idea because a family's name and a father's one at that seems very personal. I also didn't like it that she behaved like the decision was set since that's not our deal. Jasper didn't seem that fond of the idea either so I told her that and that while we could consider that name and think about it, I just wasn't sure. Maddie got quite pissy and said that it wasn't fair that she wasn't allowed to have a say in anything without passing it through the mom police because this was her child too. She can't be in the delivery room, she won't give birth to them or have any legal rights, but the least that I could do is let her have the middle name. Jasper tried to argue with her, but Maddie refused, took her things, and left us there. He stayed back for a while and he apologized for her before taking me back to my own house. My mom says that she understands Maddie's POV. I'm having a child with her man after losing her own baby and she's not allowed to do anything without me or Jasper saying yes first and that maybe I should let her have it since middle names don't really matter anymore. I'm still not entertaining the idea but I want to ask anyways. Okay, so down in the comments, honestly, I think people are being way, way too harsh on Maddie. The number one most upvoted comment is, not the butthole, you should probably consult with a family lawyer because this woman is going to try to steal your baby. Okay, let's calm down. Let's relax, guys. I don't think that's what's going on at all. I mean, yes, it is possible that Maddie is completely off the deep end and she's trying to control someone else's baby. But, you know, I kind of want to give her the benefit of the doubt here, and because I think what this really is, is a young mother who tragically lost her child, and now she's stuck in a really complicated situation, and she's struggling with it. I mean, who wouldn't have hurt feelings in Maddie's situation? If I were in Maddie's shoes, I would feel awful about it. I lose my only child, and then my girlfriend is pregnant from another man, and I've got to raise that daughter, which, you know, I'm happy to do, which is going to remind me of my own lost daughter. Like, oh my god, the emotions that come with that have got to be so complicated. So she has a minor outburst in a restaurant where she gets upset that she can't make one decision because she wants to be involved, and people are jumping on her case saying she's going to try to steal the baby. Come on, guys. Let's, let's like, chill out a little bit here. I mean, am I wrong that like, yeah, it's not her kid, but she is going to be the stepmom. So she does have some say in how the kid's going to be raised. I mean, not enough to name the kid, naturally. I agree with you there. But like, for real, I don't know. Am I off base with this? This feels, um, this feels much more nuanced than Reddit is making it out to be. The comments make this seem really black and white, like Maddie is some nutso, but I don't think that's the case. I think she's just injured, and she's grieving from the loss of her kid, because who wouldn't, and she's struggling with the situation, because it's a really complicated situation. So, OP, I'm giving you 0 out of 5 buttholes, because obviously, you should be able to name your kid whatever you want. I'm giving Jasper 0 out of 5 buttholes, because from what I've seen, he's done nothing wrong here. And, I, I mean, honestly, I kind of want to give Maddie 0 out of 5 buttholes too. Is it wrong of her to ask to, to, 
to get the middle name? It doesn't seem that unreasonable. Is it wrong of her to get emotional considering the situation? I guess a little, but I think we have to give her some leeway considering she lost her kid and now she's raising someone else's child. So this kind of feels like a no butthole situation. But considering how much the comments are blasting on Maddie, I'm guessing that the comments in this YouTube video are going to harshly disagree with me. So if I'm wrong, which I may be, it's possible I am, please let me know why I'm wrong and why Maddie deserves all this hate. Because maybe I'm just, maybe I'm being too sympathetic to the mother of a lost kid. Whoa, whoa, hold up, hold up, edit. For some clarification, we had a threesome and I got pregnant. Wow, that complicates things. I'm not living with them and neither are they living with me. We still see each other regularly, yes. And we're still sleeping together? What? While I'm still sleeping with both of them, the three of us agreed that it meant nothing more. It doesn't make us partners and they've got their own relationship. I never sleep with just Maddie or with just Jasper and it only happened three times after I told them about the baby. Three of us had a long talk today. Uh, okay. Okay, whoa, 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 that, okay, that changes things so much. You are sleeping with this woman? She was there during the moment of conception? I mean, like, yeah, it is your and Jasper's baby, but you are literally in a polyamorous threesome relationship with this woman. And you're expecting to raise them as, I guess, a thruple? And she gets no say in anything? Okay, I completely stand by my earlier assessment. Maddie definitely gets zero out of five buttholes. I might actually, honestly, have to raise your and Jasper's butthole score a little bit here. Like, how can you have Maddie so deeply in?